While the European Arctic is the fastest warming region on planet, establishing a system that provides continuous, high-quality data becomes a significant scientific challenge. We wanted to create an innovative network based on the newest scientific equipment to discover changes within the cryosphere and the ecosystem interfaces. That is why the Cryos, in Cryosphere Integrated Observatory Network on Svalbard, has been developed. The Cryos project represents 11 Polish and Norwegian research institutions, leading actors in environmental studies in Svalbard. It also became one of the first projects to consolidate the Polish scientific community in terms of homogenized research equipment, not just the formal structure. This project gives a valuable opportunity to merge, unify and extend current monitoring sites into one network to deliver unique cryosphere and open data for scientists, policymakers and local communities, thus strengthening international and interdisciplinary cooperation now and in the near future. Looking at the paintings, one sees colors, shapes and brushwork, but also clackers which give painted surfaces a historic appearance and enrich viewers' perception. So far we don't understand why various patterns are formed and we don't have language to describe them precisely. Moreover, paintings are the most precious and frequently exhibited category of art objects, which at the same time is the most vulnerable to relative humidity and temperature variations. The Greek Crackler project, using three-dimensional computer modeling and using material properties of very old historical paints, elucidated mechanisms of Crackler formation, but also demonstrated that objects with developed Crackler pattern are much less vulnerable to environmental variations than previously assumed. This naturally opens doors for more sustainable management of Newsom's environment that reduces energy consumption, but at the same time maintains high standards of the collection curve. The main aim of our project is to investigate how eutrophication and climate change impact on the capacity of the sediment to remove permanently nutrients. The main study site is the Gulf of Tansk in the southern Baltic Sea and an additional one is Goro Lagoon in Italy. Both sites experience eutrophication and climatic anomalies and are affected by riverine discharge from rivers. With our project we are comparing two seasons, mainly the warmer season and the colder seasons and, uh, and investigating how benthic fluxes change and uh, what is the role of macrofauna or primary producers in driving these fluxes. And what we found is that uh, mainly sediments uh, inhabits with macrofauna or with primary producers can buffer the regeneration of nutrients uh, by assimilation or by working into the sediments. The worst uh, system in both sites are the one in which uh, macrofauna is not living or the deepest site for example and the sites in which the organic matter of the sediments is higher. Polkanorsk is a project led by the Maltilada team from the University of Warsaw, Oslo Metropolitan University and the University of Oslo in Norway. We study how language and cognition develop in toddlers and preschoolers when they have contact with Polish, Norwegian or both. We designed a unique training for Polish parents-to-be who live in Norway and we are carefully assessing how effective it is. We also explore how differences between the two countries relate to monolingual and bilingual children's development beyond language. For example, the different ways in which the relationship between people and nature is viewed in Polish and Norwegian culture may translate into how children immersed in either one or both of these cultures reason about biological facts. As a result of the project, we will have a better understanding of how bilingual children develop. 
we will offer new tools for assessing their language and provide guidelines for parents and teachers. We want everyone to see bilingualism for the opportunity it is. The Farm Marine project is based on a collaboration of three Polish research institutions the University of Gdańsk, Institute of Oceanology of Polish Academy of Sciences and Medical University of Gdańsk with Norwegian partners namely Sintev and Eunice. The project mainly focuses on the pollutants transportation from the continental Europe to the European Arctic and the effect those pollutants exert on the Arctic ecosystem. As for now, in the water samples collected around Svalbard archipelago, we detected the presence of common pharmaceutical compounds, which led us to further investigation efforts. We have also started to investigate the biological response of key marine benthic species exposed to human pharmaceuticals in controlled laboratory conditions. In today's digital age, as social media users, we are all play a dual role as both consumers and creators of information. Social networks empower users to produce and disseminate false information. Misinformation on these platforms threatens democratic stability by fostering ideological radicalization and eroding trust in public health authorities. The Web Immunization Project aims to understand how individuals and communities can resist misinformation by merging insights from cognitive science, psychology, philosophy and computer science. We are developing a tool to gauge online resilience to false information. We are also pondering an ethical aspects of web immunity, examining the boundaries of influencing individual anatomy in the battle against misinformation.